Top Med Talk. My name is Malcolm West, I'm one of the NIHR clinical lecturers in Southampton and I'm a colorectal surgeon. Uh, thank you very much EBPOM and Poets for the kind invitation to, to have me speak at this session. The main challenge around the variability in the preoperative period is nomenclature, definitions and standardised endpoints. Well-designed and well-conducted randomised controlled trials determine effectiveness through an unbiased comparison of outcomes, events or endpoints between intervention groups. The choice and selections of outcomes is critical in trial design. There are several problems with this approach. There are several tens of thousands of research studies which are underway, with more than 500 published every week. Identifying effectiveness of interventions can be challenging because comparable interventions are defined in different ways. It is difficult for trials to affect policy and healthcare definitions and decisions unless these are designed in ways that reveal meaningful answers. Measurement and reporting of outcomes need to be tidied up, so to say, if research is to achieve its aim of helping patients and practitioners so as to improve healthcare and health outcomes. What are the definitions of a trial outcome? Unfortunately, multiple definitions exist. Whilst the, these two definitions explain the role of an outcome in a trial, they do not define what an outcome is, especially when it comes to defining a unique outcome. Apart from the accurate definitions of what an outcome is, examining the completeness of outcome reporting, including management of measurement, uh, metric, aggregation of outcomes and timing of measurement need special attention. The lack of definition produced difficulties in differentiating one outcome from another, especially across studies and across time. Take respiratory complications for as an example. There are 27 reported definitions of a pulmonary outcome with 12 definitions of a pneumonia and six definitions of respiratory failure. Many definitions are similar, but not sufficiently so to allow robust comparison. This unfortunately results in multiple reporting, apparently different outcomes across studies and impacting negatively on evidence synthesis, thereby contributing to research waste. A quick look at the Cochrane most accessed and cited reviews unveil a stark similarity in their discussion. Reporting bias is also a significant challenge. Bias is defined as a selection of a subset of original outcomes recorded in a study selected on the basis of the results for, for inclusion in publication. A recently updated systematic review on the topic unfortunately shows that there is a strong evidence of an association between significant results and publication. Studies that report positive or significant results are more likely to be published and outcomes that are statistically significant have higher odds of being reported. Publications have been found to be inconsistent with our protocols. As researchers, we need to be aware of these challenges of both types of bias and efforts should be concentrated on improving the reporting of the trials. A solution to these challenges is the development of a core outcome dataset. This is by no means a new idea. A core outcome dataset is an agreed standardized set of outcomes that should be reported and measured as a minimum in all clinical trials in specific areas of health and healthcare. The COMET initiative has been developing core outcome sets. The COMET data sets are now fully searchable on the COMET initiative website. The core outcome data sets offer many advantages. However, the primary advantage is the increasing reporting consistency across trials. Core outcome data sets maximize the potential for trial outcome contribution to systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Standardized data sets make it much more likely to measure appropriate outcomes because of the need to involve multiple different stakeholders to determine what should be the core measurement. And finally, these reduce reporting bias. An example of core outcome data sets has been used very successfully over the past 25 years. This is a, a core outcome data set in rheumatoid arthritis. This core outcome data set has been assessing symptom, re symptom resolution after anti-rheumatic drug interventions. In 2017, Kirkham and colleagues have been assessing the uptake of this core outcome data set. 
using clinicaltrials.gov randomized controlled trial entries. These have shown significant improvements after the publication of COS in the mid-90s, with more than 80% of rheumatological trials now reporting full outcomes. The production of guidance and standards in this area of core outcome datasets means that not only are more datasets being developed, but there is an expectation that they are being developed and reported to a higher standard. As methodological research in this area is still in its infancy, comet guidance and standards are being updated to reflect new evidence as it becomes available. The Comet Initiative is in its fifth systematic review with more than 300 published datasets. A minimum standard for core outcome dataset development has been established to improve metho development methodology as well as to help users to evaluate whether the proposed core outcome dataset has been developed using appropriate methodology. Core outcome set development often begins with a systematic review to identify outcomes. Reviews frequently show heterogeneity in numbers of outcomes reported across trials as well as a lack of a uniform, unique outcome definition. This review proposes a first working definition of a unique trial outcome to support reporting a quantitative assessment of outcome reporting heterogeneity. A unique outcome is one that has original meaning and context. Outcomes with different words, phrases or spelling addressing the same concept and context should be categorized as one outcome. 132 studies were included in this review. This review and others published recently emphasized that the further work is needed to refine the proposed definitions to optimize core outcome dataset development and allow a quantifiable measure of outcome reporting heterogeneity. Clearly defined patient-centered perioperative outcomes are fundamental to clinical and research practice. An intervention that seeks to improve productive care needs to be reported solidly with good endpoints that can be reliably compared within similar trials. For, for example, uh, comparing adherence rates to a prehab intervention across trials is impossible unless adherence has been consistently and accurately defined across trials. Perioperative clinical practice and research outcomes are plagued by the same challenges, lack of definitions, lack of reporting homogeneity and selective outcome reporting. Recently, however, there has been a push towards a standardized and more accurately defined outcome due to the efforts of some key individuals and their teams that are far more qualified to talk to you about perioperative standardization endpoints than myself. Only a few years ago, Miles and his, Miles and his colleagues set out a strategy to rescue this definition chaos. The standardized endpoints for perioperative medicine step was born. This expert group has been working on standardizing definitions for key perioperative medicine endpoints, providing consensus-based guidelines for clinical outcomes to be used in perioperative research. Even an apparently and simple binary outcome like perioperative mortality or survival is reported as different at different time points causing meta-analysis hell. This process has a parallel initiative with the aims of identifying core outcome sets for perioperative research studies. Together, these processes are now known as step Compact. These have sought to standardize both the criteria for and selection of measures for perioperative research in order to harmonize outcomes reporting and to enable comparisons and combination of results from different and diverse studies. This is an amazing initiative and I would like to commend the Step Compact Group for these publications that give a solid basis of these definitions, making clinical practice and research more standardized. There are now seven publications from the Step Compact Group with a few important initiatives still to be published. In these reviews, endpoints are clearly and expertly defined, leaving no excuses for clinicians and researchers not to use these interventions in day-to-day -day practice and trial design. Core outcome datasets are developed using similar methodology. As an example, the practice study identified core outcomes for physical rehabilitation interventions delivered at any stage of the rehab continuum. 
on reviewing the rehab literature, three recent major trials evaluating enhanced exercise-based physical rehabilitation interventions delivered in the ICU setting measured three, seven, and 12 outcomes respectively, with only one outcome in common across all three studies. As you can appreciate, the problem is that again, there is currently no consensus on the most appropriate outcomes for use in exercise intervention trials. A recent Cochrane review concludes that outcome measure variability impedes meta-analysis of outcomes to evaluate the effect of interventions and so review evidence cannot recommend guidance for clinical practice. To my knowledge, there are no core outcome data sets in prehabilitation. A few recently published systematic reviews concluded that the content of prehabilitation programs were heterogeneous, effectiveness difficult to establish, and unfortunately, data meta-analysis impossible to carry out. Prehabilitation is a complex intervention containing several interacting components, especially when delivered using a multimodal approach. Development, evaluation and implementation of complex processes such as prehab is challenging. However, the recently updated MRC framework for complex interventions clearly emphasize that outcome definition, ideally using core outcome datasets, is a key starting point. Prehabilitation interventions and key outcomes measured for each of its interventional components should have a core outcome data set that goes with it. This will not only aid current prehabilitation research and evidence synthesis, but also aid implementation monitoring, quality assurance and quality improvement when prehab is delivered as an NHS service. As part of the NIHR Royal College of Anesthetists and Macmillan Prehab Guidance, published this time last year, one of the key action points was to develop a standardized set of validated screening, assessment, adherence, efficacy, and outcome measures for prehabilitation develop, delivered to people with cancer. I feel that this action point needs urgent implementation, and together with POETS and the International Prehab Society, we are actively putting plans together to undertake a step compact like process to develop interventions definitions, and a core outcome data set for all aspects of prehabilitation. I would urge the prehabilitation community to participate in this international effort over the next few years, aiming to obtain standardized endpoints in prehabilitation research and prehabilitation clinical implementation. Without standardization and consensus to guide the use of increasingly complex and nuanced endpoints, we run a real risk that prehabilitation research will become embroiled in a myriad of inconsistent heterogeneous interventions and outcome measures that cannot be meaningfully compared or combined within a meta-analysis. This will result in limiting the value of the international research effort and depriving patients and clinicians of definitive answers. So in summary, Collaboration in perioperative medicine, whether between institutions or across continents, has enormous potential to improve the value of research outputs, providing a very strong footing for service implementation. Standardizing endpoints for outcome measures is fundamental to maximize the quality of such collaboration and ensuring the impact of future international prehab research. Professor Grocott, Professor Carly and myself are topic editors of this special research edition, which will be published by Frontiers in Oncology and cross-referenced by five other journals. We will be extremely grateful for any submissions and are hoping to publish a great set of articles towards the beginning of 2021. These are my acknowledgements. Thank you for listening. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Don't forget to subscribe via your podcatcher. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. And also, don't forget, Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EdPom, evidence-based perioptive medicine. We'd love you to find out more about that. If you check out edpom.org, you can find low prices on some of the conferences we're organising around the world. Many of them are virtual and don't even involve you leaving your own home home. Check out ebpom.org now.